So I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about uh, prophylactic fixation of the femoral neck. So uh, my key messages are don't miss a femoral neck fracture. Uh, consider the entire femur when the femur is broken. And prophylactic fixation of the neck is, I think, a really good option. And that, an example of that is the uh, case on the right. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is really um, try and um, deal with why it is um, you've got a problem with respect to nailing femur fractures. Um, getting an understanding of um, the problem that you're trying to address is really, I think, um, uh, critical. So this is a 42-year-old female polytrauma patient. Uh, you can see there's imaging of the uh, pelvis and there's also imaging of the femur. There's not really dedicated um, hip views. Um, this patient goes on to um, have a CT scan, uh, which um, doesn't really show anything. Um, um, and so is a trauma patient and undergoes um, a retrograde uh, femoral nail. Post-op, the patient um, complains of hip pain. Some x-rays are done. There's a suggestion of a femoral neck fracture. Um, it's confirmed on a, a CT scan um, and uh, subsequently gets treated with um, this um, additional femoral neck uh, fracture fixation. And the patient uh, does reasonably well um, at four-year follow-up. This is just another example of a high energy um, uh, femoral shaft fracture, segmental fracture. A patient um, has a, a CT scan. There's not really um, any convincing evidence of a femoral neck fracture. Patient has an anti-grade uh, femoral nail that's uh, locked. Uh, Post-op x-rays um, look good. Patient has a CT scanogram to assess length and rotation. And on, on that imaging, you can see a displaced um, femoral neck fracture. And this patient also requires um, adjunctive uh, fixation. It's another example of a high energy uh, femoral shaft fracture, uh, significant uh, comminution um, in the mid shaft of the uh, femur. Patient um, also has an ipsilateral tibial shaft fracture, so a floating knee. Um, you can see um, imaging of the femoral neck does not show um, a uh, femoral neck fracture on CT scan. Patient um, undergoes retrograde um, nailing of the femur, anagrade nailing of the uh, tibia. You can see post-op patient complains of some hip pain. And on the images on the right, you can see the uh, base of neck, femoral neck fracture. This patient uh, um, gets taken back to the operating room. Uh, you can see the... Um, guide wire up the femoral nail, um, provisional fixation of the neck to ensure that it doesn't uh, displace, the nail gets backed out, um, uh, sliding hip screw gets uh, put in and then the uh, nail gets reinserted uh, more distally and the distal fixation of the side plate and the locking of the um, uh, femoral nail uh, occurs. And this patient does well, but you can see all of the um, hassle um, that's um, uh, resulted um, from lack of prophylactic fixation of the neck. So I think when you're looking at neck shaft um, fractures, um, there's no question there's um, a lot of controversy um, in this area. Certainly there's a lot of controversy in terms of whether to use single or dual implants. There's um, a lot of controversy in terms of the um, timing of fixation. So whether to fix the neck first or to fix the shaft first, but I would think where there is no controversy is the need to prevent um, an undisplaced femoral neck fracture from um, displacing. Certainly in terms of the problem, uh, misdiagnosis uh, rate is uh, very high. So it's anywhere up to 22%. Uh, the diagnosis uh, when made is often uh, delayed and there really is a serious impact in young patients. Certainly um, if you look at young patients uh, with femoral neck fractures, complications, um, can be very um, high with high rates of AVN and non-union. And this um, often results um, in uh, the need for conversion of total hip arthroplasty. So it's really um, a complication um, that needs to be avoided and anything you can do to prevent that from occurring in a young patient, I think would be um, important. This is just a, another example um, of what often happens with uh, femoral shaft fractures. Patient's a trauma patient, um, has a pelvis fracture, has a femur shaft fracture, a lot of focus on the pelvis and the femur, and really the appreciation for the femoral neck is in the operating room, and you can see with traction uh, the displacement of the femoral uh, neck fracture. 
This patient uh, required dual implants, a uh, retrograde nail, and a sliding hip screw, and fortunately uh, went on to um, heal both uh, fractures uh, without um, incident. So I think the first thing is really um, the critical nature of um, diagnosing um, a femoral neck fracture in a patient that has a femoral shaft fracture. This is some work from Paul Tornetta more than uh, 10 years ago. Um, on the importance of making the diagnosis and using a uh, protocol to get that diagnosis. They advocated for uh, pre-op um, uh, AP internal rotation views of the hips, so specified hip views, a fine cut um, axial CT, intraoperative fluoroscopic um, lateral of the hip uh, prior to fixation of the shaft, and then also um, AP and lateral of the hip um, after fixation, but prior to leaving the operating room. Use of that um, protocol actually uh, reduced the delay in diagnosis by um, uh, 91%. Uh, um, the problem is, is that despite these uh, protocols, we still see um, um, a fairly high um, uh, prevalence of missed uh, femoral neck fractures. Um, uh, certainly even with uh, CT scans, um, you still don't uh, pick up these uh, injuries. And this is a good study from Lisa Canada showing that um, 18% of their thin, uh, thin cut CTs, they didn't uh, see a um, fracture. Bob O'Toole um, from shock trauma, similarly looking at the value of combined CT and plain radiographs, again, found a very um, high rate of missed femoral neck fractures that was similar and substantial, very low sensitivity, both for plain films and um, uh, CT. And they um, said it was really important to look at all the imaging uh, to potentially um, reduce the incidence of femoral neck fracture, not depending um, just on the pre-op CT. Um, I think this is a great study that was recently uh, published in uh, the journal. Um, they talk um, about a new imaging protocol um, and the use of uh, MRI. So I think there's been a real reluctance to use MRI in trauma patients because it takes time but they um, advocated for this uh, coronal rapid limited sequence um, MRI where you're just getting coronal views over about a 10 minute period of time. And they could essentially reduce their um, misdiagnosis rate um, to zero. So in 12% of their patients, CT didn't show the injury. Um, they could actually see it um, uh, on MRI. And this is just an example of a case um, from their uh, paper. You can see on plain x-ray um, and CT, you don't see the fracture, you do see it on the MRI. This patient went on to displace and required um, treatment. So given the problem with um, diagnosis, does it make sense to prophylactically fix the femoral neck? And is there any evidence in support of pro prophylactic neck fixation? So this is a nice study published by Corey um, Collins. It's had 61 um, femoral shaft tra uh, fractures treated with um, a cephalomedullary um, uh, nail found 60 to 61 fractures united and they had no problems at the hip uh, with um, the use of these cephalomedullary locking screws. They followed this up with a um, cost-effective analysis and found that as long as the uh, cephalomedullary nail wasn't too expensive, it was uh, cost-effective, certainly not cost-effective in terms of getting the CT scan. So the question then is, um, does the type of uh, cephalomedullary nail matter? There's not a lot of good um, clinical evidence um, on that front, but there is some biomechanical work. So uh, should you use a piriformis or trochanteric um, entry nail? A recent study uh, published um, in Injury uh, where they looked at um, piriformis entry nails and what they did to the strength of the proximal femur. You can see with an intact femur, reduction in strength with uh, reduce of with the insertion entry point, um, and then really no benefit in terms of putting um, the recon screws up into the head with a piriformis entry nail. They followed that study with a study that was just published in the JOT looking at um, piriformis entry versus trochanteric entry, and they found that the trochanteric entry didn't really um, reduce the strength of the proximal femur and was much better than a piriformis entry nail. So I think if you're going to um, think about using this technique, I would shy uh, more towards use of uh, trochanteric um, entry nails. I think geriatric fractures, um, as been mentioned, uh, really makes uh, sense to span the femur um, in all cases. And um, I think it's also important for periprosthetic fractures. This is just an example of, a, again, a fracture above a plate. Um, I think you can uh, prophylactically fix the uh, neck with um, plates as well. And this is just um, an example um, of that. 
So um, in conclusion, uh, don't miss the femoral neck fracture. Evaluate all of the available uh, imaging. That's pre-op, intra-op, and post-op. Um, if you're going to depend on plain x-rays, they should be dedicated hip views. Um, look at the fluoro carefully. Fine cut CT can be helpful, but it's not definitive. And I think the future is probably in rapid limited sequence MRI. I think you should consider the entire femur when the femur is broken. And uh, I think prophylactic fixation of the neck is a really good option. And I would use a ream trochanteric entry cephalomedullary locked nail.